we pray that you may speak to our hearts. May we stand on Christ the solid rock because these other grounds are but sinking sand. Speak to us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a saying that strong people, especially men, don't cry. Have you ever heard that saying before? Strong people do not what? There are some that relate crime to be a weakly. In fact, if you are a preacher and you lose a beloved one, people will come and tell you, do not cry, there is a resurrection morning someday. It seems that if you express your emotions, then somehow you are weak. hearing, and Eokana, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why and why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk a chilo, Hannah arose, and now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the was was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. The saint, she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord, and she wept bitterly. That is our Bible passage. And in verse 8, we get the sermon title, which simply says, Why are you crying? Why do you weep? Now, there are a number of reasons that make people cry. If you study your Bible, you will notice that at one particular point, Jesus, what? Wept. He comes to a funeral and he sees these people who look hopeless, and the Bible tells us Jesus wept. In fact, when you study your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there are a number of portions that we get to see that people did cry. Now, let's bring it down to our time. You and I do understand that there are some young people that are broken. And this is because the people who were supposed to protect them have abused them. There are some businessmen that have lost their businesses and they have lost their jobs. And because of that, some are crying. Here is a graduate who is looking forward to find employment and jobs do not come by. Some do cry. There are some, when they look at their healthy condition, indeed their healthy is compromised. They move from one particular medical institution to the other, hoping that somehow they'll be relieved of their burden, and yet the situation continues to grow. There are some that look forward to have children, and they have been married for some time, and children seem not to come back. And when they look at their biological clock, it seems to be running so fast. It seems like things are just against them. In the book of Samuel, we find a woman by the name of Hannah. She's married to Elkanah, and this particular man has got two 
wise. I want you to be able to get the passage in its proper context. When you look at First Samuel chapter 1, you realize that there is this particular man has got two wives and the other woman is Penina and she is blessed with children. Now, as you continue to study, to study the passage, verse 6 has this to say. First Samuel chapter 1. Reading verse 6, the Bible says, And her rivalry used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. Are you aware that there are some people that take pleasure in your suffering? There are some people that are happy and get to smile when things seem not just to go on your way. The Bible tells us that this particular woman made sure that every day she provoked her and not only provoked her, but irritated her. I don't know whether you have ever been irritated in your life by someone. And now what the Bible says uh, is that this woman is barren simply because the Lord has what? Closed her womb. I want you to understand that in this particular world, there are a number of things that we get to do. When you look at this woman, she is within the biological range to have a child. Maybe today, somebody may have recommended to see a gynecologist or somebody that knows some help that may be of help. But beloved, the Bible says that it was not her own making. It is the Lord that had closed the what? The womb. And because of that, there was somebody that was taking pride in that. Somebody was excited. The Bible tells us that as you go down, listen to this, verse 7, and so it went on year by year as often as she went up to the house of the Lord that she used to provoke her. Now notice, she was provoked even when she went to the house of what? Of the Lord. Even when she came to Woodlands Extension, there was that particular member that was provoking her. Not only was she provoked at home, but she was also followed at church. There are some that have got the spirit of Penina among ourselves. But we pray that this particular spirit may come to a dead end. You see, the Bible says as she goes to the temple to pray, she was provoked not just for a year, but the Bible says a year after what? A year. Meaning that even when she went for cup meeting, this particular woman was present in the congregation and reminded her about her barrenness. Reminded her about her brokenness. The Bible tells us that because of this, she cried. And the husband notices the problem. And he asks the question, why do you weep? Notice the husband asked three important questions. The first question, the Bible says, and he asked, why do you weep? Number two, why don't you what? eat? Number three, why is your heart sad? Number four is in form of a question and yet a solution. He has to say, am I not better than ten what? Sons. Sometimes when we are trying to provide a solution, our solutions are actually worse than the problem itself. Never rush to comment. Sometimes the best thing you can do, just listen to the problem. The Bible tells us that he asked her, why are you sad? And I want to ask you the same three important questions. Why are you fasting today? Why is your countenance sad? Why are you sad? What is it that you are going through? Could it be that there is something that is pressing so much in your heart? That you feel that this is too much, you are unable to bear it. Is there a solution for that? Listen, child of God, the Bible says in verse 10 that she was greatly 
this place. She actually had depression. Are you aware that depression is not only for those that are outside the church, but even those that are in the church are depressed? In fact, are you aware that elders and pastors also get depressed? When you study the Bible, you will notice that there is a man of God by the name of Elijah. He is coming from the top mountain. He is right from Mount Carmel. He kills more than 400 prophets, and he is hoping for a radical change in the camp of Israel. The Bible tells us that when he kills those men, the man uh, Jezab, the woman Jezebel also says Elijah will be dead tomorrow by this time. When he hears that, he runs away and he goes to God and he says, God, look at what is happening. Allow me to what? Die. Sometimes when we are looking for a radical change, when we are looking for things to happen, things may not always go our way. But the question is, when we are in trouble, when we are persecuted on every side, when everything seems to be falling apart, where do we go? I want us to learn something from this particular woman. The Bible tells us that she is sad. She is unable to eat. Not that food is not available. Food is there, but she has lost her appetite. And the husband looks at that and he comes up with a question, am I not better? What more do you need? Have I not provided? When it comes to sacrifices, don't I give you more double sacrifice than your friend? He desires to have a child. Each one of us have got our own prayer request. Each one of us have our, our own unique desires. Listen, in verse 11, the Bible says, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on my, if indeed you will look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give your servant a son then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. Hallelujah, church. The lady says to God, she prays to God, and first of all, before the Lord even answers her prayer, she makes a vow. She acts on her faith, and she says, Lord, if only you can look at my affliction. And maybe there's somebody today that is saying, Lord, if only you can look at my case. If only you can look at my issues. If only you can come through in my situation. The Bible says, the woman says, Lord, if only you can look into my affliction. You see, there's something that the Bible says. And allow me to read for you the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Exodus, chapter 3. And allow me to start from verse 7. This is what the Bible says as I read in your hearing. Exodus, chapter 3, read in verse 7. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their tax masters. God is saying, I have seen the affliction of my people at Woodlands Extension. I want you to know God sees what you go through. Not only God does he see what you go through, he sees your tears. And when you cry, God's ears are wide open to listen to your cry. And so as he looks at Israel, he says, I have seen their affliction. I have seen what these tax masters are doing to them. Now, when God sees, it is not just enough to act to see. Listen to verse 8. The Bible says, And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I want you to know that today God will deliver you out of your bondage. For there is nothing impossible with our God. 
The Bible says, I'm not sending an angel, but I will come what? Down. For I have seen what my people are going through. And I will take them out of captivity to the promised land. Israel wept. Israel cried. The Bible says in verse 8, I will come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians to bring them out of the land to a good land a, and a broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. God sees. God feels your pain. And he says in verse 9, And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come. I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Hannah did realize that there's something that God did for Israel of old. Therefore, she prays to God and says, Lord, look at my affliction. Not only does she say, look at my affliction, she says, if only you will not forget your servant. There are some of us that feel like God has forgotten us. We feel like our prayers are nothing, but I'm here to remind you that your prayers do matters in the sight of God. There is no prayer that we give that God does not notice. When we pray in faith, God will surely reward your prayer. And so the Bible says, that she says, forget not your servant. And she is specific. She does not just say, give me a child. But she says, give me a son. We must learn to be specific in our prayer. Not only God should you give me a husband, but give me a loving husband. Hallelujah. A true Adventist. A true Adventist woman. Learn to present your issues before God. Be specific with him and he will take care of your prayer. Verse 12. As she continued praying before the Lord, he observed her mouth and Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only the lips moved and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli spoke her to be a drunken woman. Now, I want you to get this. She is praying. Her voice is not coming out because she is in pain. She is going through hard things. Then the priest, the church pastor, the district pastor comes and sees this woman who only her lips are moving and he says, she's what? Drunk. I want you to know that sometimes your pastor may not understand you, but God does understand you. Sometimes the elder may not understand you, but God knows what you are going through. The prayer for it to be heard, it is not how loud you shout, but simply how your heart is connected to Jehovah God. And so as she pours out to God in silence, God is able to see the language of our heart. And this is what the Bible says. When the priest came, he texts her and he says, you are like, listen to what the priest said. And he said to her, how long will you go being drunk? For how long will you continue to be what? Drunk. But put your wine away from you. Her prayer was mistaken that she had taken wine. It is possible, friends, for people to mistake us that when we come to church, we are just wasting our time. But we are not wasting time. God is still in control of the situation. Listen to what the Bible says. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. Are you troubled, child of God? Is your home broken to a point that your spirit is troubled, that you are unable to have a sound sleep? How is your situation in your life? When you look at yourself, is everything moving in your way? The Bible says, she says, my spirit is troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Hallelujah. 
There are times when human beings cannot hear us and understand us, but pour your heart to God who understands. And this is what this woman does. She pours out her heart to God who knows, who created her in her own image. And when he looks at her, he knows what the issue is. I love what the man of God later then said. Listen to what the Bible says. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. Do you feel worthless? Are there some times that you feel you just want to end your life? One day, I was called. A certain young lady, just a student, 22 years. She says to me, Pastor, my life has no meaning anymore to me. I have aborted about four times, and all what I think of is killing myself. My life is not worthy. In fact, the pregnancy I'm carrying, it is a married man that pregnanted me. And when such things happen, we get to a point that we feel so worthless, that nothing seems to be making sense to us. And this woman simply says, regard not, your, regard not me to be a worthless woman. I want you to know that you are of great value in the sight of God. Every sinner that comes to Jesus and confesses Jesus is faithful enough to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Not only does he wash us from all our unrighteousness, but he imparts and he imputes his righteousness on us. He treats us as though we have never sinned in our life. You are of great value in the sight of God. For all long, your servant has been speaking out of great anxiety. Then he answered, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. Hallelujah. The man of God simply says, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant the petition that you have offered to him. I don't know what you have been praying for. But today I want to say, may God grant you your petition. May God answer you your prayer. May God lift you from the valley to the top mountain. May God give you good life. May the God of Israel grant you good health. At a time when things have been shaken, may God make you stand on firmly the rock because he is unmovable. God is unmovable and yet he can move things in your life. This God that we worship, he is faithful and he answers prayer. The woman came to the temple, somebody provoked her, but notice her provocation could not prevent the prayer from being answered. I don't know who has said something ill in your life. I don't know your discouragement. But one thing that I know, we serve a living God. The God that started this church is the same God that will see you through to the end. Solomon says, when we come to a congregation like this one and we pour out our hearts, he says that if we have sinned, forgive us. And if, Lord, we have gone astray, bring us back in the faith. And what we pray for, please answer our prayer. And that is what I want us to do this afternoon. We'll be singing the song, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. And as we are singing this song, I want to make a special appeal. It's not for everyone, but it is for that individual that wants his or her prayer to be attended to. The battle may have been long, but today you are saying, Lord Jesus, help me like you did for her. Forget me not. Come through in my life. I won't ask you to stand, but I'll ask you to come to the front because I believe that God is in this place. Hallelujah. And so as we are singing this song, I want you to come to the front, for we shall have two word of prayers, and we shall seek the Lord faithfully, and I believe the Lord answers prayer. If you are there, 
Please come as we start this song.